Hey guys, Steve Welch here. So driving to work now. Um, the temperature this morning was 34 balmy degrees. Um, it's uh, kind of fun here in, uh, in Nashville. What tends to happen is you get 70, 70, 70, 70, freeze your butt off. Anyway, um, that's kind of how that ends up working. So it'll probably be 70 next week. But the whole reason for bringing this video is about the, the you have this temperature swing and it happens in a lot of places and you walk out to your vehicle and you got that little tire pressure light on like what i'll show you right there right and you're you might have a, you know, a dialogue box that's with it that says adjust tire pressure or check tire pressure or something like that um and a few people have asked the question now, now sometimes it just has that symbol and that symbol has people a lot of times will go what the heck does that mean because you don't see it that often right but I'm um, going to tell you a few things about the tire pressure system so that you'll better know about it, what turns it on, you know, when best to fill your tires, how to fill your tires, stuff like that. Um, just kind of want to tell you some of those things. That way you have a better knowledge on what it is, how to work it, why it's there, all the fun stuff, right? So um, first off, the tire pressure monitor system. So it's commonly called the TPMS, which is what it stands for, tire pressure monitor system. That system was mandated in the US in 2007. Um, it was, I mean, the law passed before then, but that's when every manufacturer that sold the car in the US by 2007 had to have some type of monitor system in their car. Um, in Europe, that, that same thing was 2014 that they actually mandated it. Um, but by then, most of them had it anyway. They just made it where it was a rule. Um, so, realistically, speaking when it first came out so if you've got an 07 something it probably didn't unless it was a, a high-end car it probably didn't show you the exact tire right and, and i think actually corvette's the first one that had a, a monitor system if i'm not mistaken i believe that's what i saw um but it wouldn't show you your right front tire is is low or something like that it would just say a tire's low and there was a good reason for that because you know you would have to reassign it every time you rotated your tires because it would say the right front but you just said your tires rotated and guess what it's on the left rear so it, it didn't really matter so it was about go through find out what you're and I'll, and I'll show you on the door jam by the way is, is how you're going to find out what your recommended pressure is right and that's going to be for all your tires including your spare right so but I've had, you know, a lot of times people go through and they'll be like, oh, I got everything. It's all set to, you know, 32 PSI, which is what the recommended is, and the light's still on. Well, two things. If, if you go through and, and you have that light on, you can't tell which position's turning it on, and you've set everything, there's two things that can be. Now, you might need to spin the tire, so kind of get the tires up to speed for it to go off. That There are some occasions that that will work. Um, the other thing is that it could be your spare tire. Um, your spare tire is monitored in a lot of cases, but won't even show up on that list. So you might have that list that shows you all four tires and shows the uh, the location and in, in that. And you know, it, obviously, like I said, you got to reassign it every time you rotate it. But if if you know, it's not that hard to do. It's just you want to make sure it's done. But um, a lot of times the spare doesn't show up on that screen but it is monitored so um and then also a lot of times you'll find out that you know hey 35 psi on all the tires and the spare is at 80. well the spare is probably a different tire it might be a donut something like that but if you look at it and go well spares is 65 i need to lower that no the spares it could be 80 could be 60. usually your spare tire has a higher pressure than what the other tires have um, but check it, right? Check check what it's uh, what it's got on it. So, question is: so what turns on the light? What how, how much pressure do you need to be off to turn the light on? And here's something that some people might not know either: the light will turn on for over pressure or for under pressure. So what it's watching for is three to five psi off of nominal. So basically, if if it's 35 PSI is what the um, the rating is on it, and it's you know at it's at 36, it's not turning on. It's at 34. It's not it's not turning on. What it's watching for is that three to five pounds, and and most of them error off to about that five pound mark. 
But if it's 30, or and, and actually it'd probably be 29 because you dropped just below the five. So if it gets 29-ish around in there, and that's what it's sensing, it'll turn that light on. And it'd be on any tire position, right? So three to five off of, off of nominal will turn on that, that tire position. Um, now, why does it turn on when the weather is bad? Um, and, and, you know, because a lot of times you'll walk around and go, man, all my tires look fine. I don't have any nails in them. And I don't, I don't know why they're all at 28 PSI. Well, like I said, we're at 34 when I left the house and my light was on. Well, why does that happen? Well, with just regular air, and there's a few variables to it, but, but with regular air in a tire, every 10 degrees that the temperature goes down, it's going to drop the tire pressure by about one to two pounds um, PSI as tire pressure because hot air is creates more pressure, right? Now, something that's kind of an uh, interesting thing, so like I said, when I left the house today, my light was on because I was just barely below the threshold, but I drive an hour to work and on my way in, it's built its way back up. Now, I, I'm probably still gonna add some air pressure to it uh, just because we're coming into cold weather and I wanna have the, the pressures be higher, but realistically, it, you know, it, it, as you're driving, your tire gets warmer. As your tire gets warmer, it's going to add pressure to the inside based off of the heat that your tire is creating from the friction of the road. So that's why you might be driving to work or, or driving the kids to school or something like that. And you go, oh, that light was on, but now it's off. Well, if the temperature stays similar, you're gonna keep having that, I get in the car, the light's on. I drive for a little bit, the light's off. Um, you might be better off just to add some pressure, right? Um, now here's the other thing. So they always say your tire pressure cold, right? That's part of the, you know, a warm tire is going to have a higher pressure, right? So whenever you look at that door jam, it always says 35 PSI cold, or it'll say 32 PSI cold, or maybe 40 PSI cold. If you have like a low profile tire, it might say 50 PSI cold. Right? So the low profile tires tend to have a higher pressure at that just because you don't want them flexing as much you'll end up hitting, hitting your rim on the road but it always says cold and you go well, what's cold you want me to put it in the freezer um how, how am i supposed to figure out what cold is well kind of the rule of thumb for cold is about 65 degrees fahrenheit or about 20 celsius and i know people come back 20 celsius is 68 and, I, I know, but you just kind of get the, the general. It's about a round number. So 65 in the U.S. and Fahrenheit and about 20 degrees Celsius is, is usually where you're looking to fill it up cold. Now, why does that number make sense? Well, the number makes sense because if you set it to the nominal pressure, so if you're at 35, you set it to the nominal pressure while it's 65 degrees out, and you go and you get to 100 degrees, your light's probably not turning on. And then vice versa, you go to where it's 30 degrees, your light probably is not turning on. It, it could, but but just it gives you the best shot of not having to mess with it. Um, now the other thing is a lot of people be like, well, I've got nitrogen in my tires. Okay, so so a lot of you know dealerships have been charging extra for nitrogen, right? And you're going, all right, well, they, they changed out the air and put nitrogen in there. Well, realize something, and a lot of people don't realize this, but somewhere around 70% of the air you breathe is nitrogen. You know, it's like you're going, well, it's oxygen. Well, no, it's, it, there's not as much oxygen as you think. It's like 70%, I believe is the right number, but anybody that's in that profession can correct me on it. But somewhere around 70% of the air in the atmosphere is nitrogen. So when you put nitrogen in your tires, you're just putting a little bit more nitrogen than what it had. And realize that the reason you do nitrogen is not to change the issue that I'm talking about where cold weather turns on the light because any gas, it, it's physics, any gas is affected the same way by temperature. Basically meaning that if, uh, if the oxygen would have turned on your light, then so will the nitrogen, right? And, and I say oxygen because you realize what I mean. But if, if the regular air 
in the atmosphere would have turned on the, the light and you fill it with straight nitrogen, it'll still turn on the light. So why, why would you put nitrogen in a tire if, if it doesn't help that? And, and there's a good reason for that is that, um, and, and I'm not a physicist, don't, but I kind of know the idea. So nitrogen has bigger molecules to it than what a, a lot of the other stuff that's in the air, I guess. Um, and tires, the rubber in a tire naturally is porous, right? So if you have uh, just regular air in a tire, that air in a tire can actually seep out over time. So that's why sometimes you look at a car that sat somewhere and it's been sitting for a year and all the tires are flat. Uh, it, it's just because it's not because there's a leak in the tire. It's just because rub the rubber is naturally porous. Well, if you put nitrogen in that tire, it's going to seep out at a slower rate than what it would otherwise because the molecules are bigger, harder to go through the rubber. That's what it's for. It does not help you with temperature changes. Um, so in case somebody's saying, oh, it's for the temperature change, they're, they're wrong. They might think that. It might be 100% accurate in thinking that, but they're wrong, <laughs> just so you know. So, gotta say, right? So how does it read the pressure? And that's it's a fun question to ask people because you get a lot of fun answers. Um, but the, the real answer on it is there's actually a little butterfly looking sensor that is in the rim. And that butterfly sensor, what it does is it actually can sense the pressure. It's attached to the bottom of the valve stem um, and it can attach to pressure. Now, I've seen guys too, once they rotate the tires, what they do is they walk around with this little machine that will talk to the, the car or talk to the sensor or whatever they're talking to. Um, but it'll say, this one's right front, this one's left front, this one's right rear, this one's left rear. And it will basically tell the car which sensor is what so it knows what to read out to the driver. I've seen them even do that though on cars that don't specifically read which wheel is. But hey, right, it, at least they, they go through and they make sure that those sensors are assigned. But I will tell you this, that there can be different sets. So if you change your wheels, Right? If you change your wheels, you'll have that sensor is gonna have to be changed. Like I've seen people that go get a brand new car and then change their wheels and it's like, yep, and you gotta change all four sensors. Like, well, the sensors are brand new. Yeah, but the wheels that take them might be set up different. So realize that those sensors might not carry over from you know, the car that you're trading the wheels on. So if you're doing a wheel upgrade, you might have a problem with that and just kind of try to get ahead of that so you don't have to break the wheels back down and replace the sensors after the fact. Just just double check that, right? Um, but uh, I, the other thing is, is that a lot of times while replacing your tire, if the shop that's doing it doesn't line the tire up or maybe the tire doesn't come apart right, a lot of times those sensors can be damaged. So um, it's not necessarily something where the shop will go, oh, we broke it, we're paying for it. It really, actually in most cases, no, you're gonna pay for it. But they're gonna tell you that your sensor is bad, you need a new sensor. Why? Because they probably broke it. But like I said, it, it might've been unavoidable while they're taking off the wheel. That's just, you know, something that, uh, that happens right so um, but those those sensors can be important the other thing is I've also had some people that have talked about um, and they'll be like okay so I have a flat tire and I put my spare on and now that my spare is on I still have my tire light is on and yeah your your tire light your spare or your tire is in the back and it's you know it's flat so yeah, it's gonna leave that tire on until you replace or repair that tire and get that pressure back up. Um, also realize if you say you like swap tires with your, your friend or something like that, you gotta assign those sensors or obviously you're gonna turn your sensor on, the, the, the light on. So there's a lot of reasons that that light can come on. There's a lot of things that you can kind of do to, to mitigate it when it does. Um, and, and a lot of times, you know, where do you start? Start by putting all your pressure in. Uh, basically set it to exactly 35. Uh, the reason I say to set it, or, or whatever the, the number is in the door jam. Um, the reason I say to set it to exact, not, you know, some people be like, oh, 
Well, if it's really cold, I want to set it to a little bit different than that. If it's really hot, I want to I want to change it by one degree, you know, down so that it doesn't get too. I mean, don't don't get cute. The reason I say that is because the car might not sense the same thing your gauge does. So you might go through and have this little cheap dollar ninety nine gauge that you got at a, bo a big box store, and you're looking at it, and it's got that little thing that kicks out the bottom and you're reading it and you're going all right that looks like about 32 that looks like about 35 and you're you're trying to, to read it well the the car might have a more accurate reading and you you put it up there and you're going well, i'm going to add a couple of pounds of pressure or i'm going to take away a couple of pounds of pressure and you're really you you've added it up to 29 and you walked all around but it looked like 35 on that gauge and you're going i don't know why that light won't turn on just or because you're trying to stay a little bit lower. actually it looked like 32 because you were trying to stay a couple pounds below that but it's really reading 28 that that kind of a thing right and you're going i don't know why the light won't shut off i must have a problem with my sensor just try to put it to the exact if you can if you can get a digital scale that digital scale might be a little bit more accurate than trying to read that stick especially if you got bad eyesight because those those sticks can be really hard to see even if you have good eyesight so um hey maybe get a digital gauge something like that kind of keep it in your car there's never a problem when you do that um i'll i'll link a couple digital gauges that i like in the uh, description there um just just because and then the other thing i like to do is i actually got a craftsman um trigger type uh air uh air compressor and what it is, is it's all, all it's for is tires, tires, balls, whatever. And I like that thing. It's It works really well. It can do up to, I think, a 120 PSI on a tire, which would be like a truck tire for like a semi. But it uses just like regular Craftsman batteries. And they're not they're not sponsoring this or anything. I mean, I'll, I'll link it in the description. So if you guys decide you want to get the same one I got, just click the link. That'll help me out. But, um, but uh, I'll link that in the description. But that thing has come in more handy than I could tell you. Um, I even used it as a little air blower because you, you had a little nozzle with it. I used it as a little air blower when I was uh, taking deck boards out of my, my old deck. So it, there's a lot of things you can use it for, but it's specifically designed for tires. And I had a flat tire in, on, it was actually on my lawnmower. And I brought that thing out and it went from zero to full really quick. Um, so it's it's nice to have that kind of thing. You're not chasing one of those cords like what you plug into the 12 volt, um, the lighter style one in the, in the car. So you're not trying to make sure that it fits, especially if you have a truck like I do. Some of those cords aren't long enough to get you all the way there. I don't know how many times with my old one that I had that thing dangling in the air, trying to reach the back tire or, or where you have to roll the tire forward a little bit to get the, uh, the trader or to get the uh, tire valve close enough to where you could um, hook it up so yeah just a couple of those things check those out especially if you're looking for a good Christmas gift man I, that's some of the things I would recommend for people especially if you got uh, uh, some people that go out there because those batteries will stay charged pretty long and uh, you can get you know it's all part of that craftsman system so I really like those so um, but yeah, just, just go ahead and take a look at those, see what you guys think. But hey, I've rambled long enough, but so hopefully that answered all your questions about the tire pressure, tire pressure monitors, and a, a couple of little fun little things like, uh, like to tell you that I use. But uh, hey, Steve Welch here, trying to help you guys to understand the TPMS monitor, why it's there, what it does, all the fun stuff, and uh, how to hopefully stop it from coming on for at least most of the year. You guys have a great day. We're going to talk to you soon. Bye.